Welcome back. March 14th, 2017. You know, with Japan's declining population, the need for foreign employees and workers to come in bringing skills and labor has increased. Recently, the Japanese diet is considering lowering the requirements for permanent residency. And in this light, foreign trainees are coming in droves to Japan to do menial work and to provide uh, labor under the terms of an internship. Michael, you're watching this too? Well, the, the, the two issues, you would think they were separate because one is talking about highly skilled labor and people who have money versus persons who are largely put into very, very low skills work. 3K, uh, 4K. And, well, uh, the dangerous, uh, and dirty, dirty, and, and uh, on people who, uh, things that require a lot of time, mm -hmm. uh, but are nevertheless poorly paid. And so, but it's really part of the whole story of demographics here in Japan, that there is simply not enough labor, either skilled or unskilled, to fill the positions that retirees are going to, are, are right. leaving. So, so the Japanese came up with a technique, let's, these other countries that are surrounding Japan, bring in your, your workers here, they can be skilled up. You well, know, that's what they've, it, that's the, the other tie, that, that they're going to be skilled up. So it's called the technical training program. It's actually two different programs. And it's become a complete scam. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but it's a necessary scam in that it, people eventually do want to eat lettuce. People mm -hmm. eventually do want to have, if they're going to buy clothes that are made in Japan, somebody has to be paid rock bottom wages to make those clothes. Yeah, but wait a minute, this started in 2010. So what was Japan doing about people picking lettuce before then? Oh no, though, this mm -hmm. has been going on for a very long time. The no, training... the, but the, defining them as interns, my understanding was that there were about 100,000 in 2010, 2011. Now it's doubled to a couple of trainees. hundred thousand. Yeah, the trainees yeah. program has existed for quite some time, it, but it's been, it's been reformed and re-reformed and re-reformed and at least the government, this government, is fi finally saying it's a scam mm -hmm. and people are being abused by this. The most common abuses are simply that they don't pay. Uh, the second is that they take away the, the travel documents, the passports, the, passports right. the visas, so that... And you will do what we say. You do what you say and that it was... The, the first step, of course, that sent it down, barreling down the road into corruption was by taking it out of government hands and giving it to an NPO to manage, a nonprofit organization, which has, doesn't have the resources do, to observe all of these different employers, thousands of them around Japan, mm -hmm. has no means of enforcement. It's not a, a division of the government. It can only say, tis, 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 don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. It's been... So well, even now, right? And even now, it doesn't right. have anything. So that's why they're discussing it in the diet. What can we do? But of course, when you do that, you open up the Pandora's box. Does Japan need immigrants? Right. And, and then that brings up the, the entire immigrant discussion all over the world. But also, it's a, it's a brand problem for Japan because there's a February 10th article in the New York Times about this issue of Japan's limited immigration mixed in with the shortage of workers. And the very last quote of the article, where they've been sort of following one woman who had to pay about 7,000 US dollars to even broker entering right. Japan. Can you imagine having to pay that back? And that's how they often just get stuck here and become illegals. And her last quote was, my image of Japan was that it was a good country. Sure. And that's what they think. They're coming here because Japan has such a solid, stellar mm -hmm. reputation of taking care of people. Omotenashi, as we talk right. about all the time. But this is very different because these people really sort of disappear. They're out in the hinterland where mm -hmm. you also don't have probably, uh, where do you go? Where do you turn to for labor protections? I mean, they are at the mercy of the state and as you say, with the MPOs, they don't have the resources to really do much. So mm -hmm. um, it also opens the door then to people who want to exploit these workers to try to get back pay. Right. And, and then the businesses say, well, okay, we're not going to work with any of them. Mm -hmm. So it's this vicious cycle. Right. But even if it's a scam, the Japanese government isn't going to get rid of it. No, they need the labor. That's right. But looking at it from the outside, you know, I mean, one gets the sense being in Washington that... Uh, that because the demographic issues are so severe for Japan, there is a realization, especially in the business community, of the need to have skilled workers. 
And so one gets the sense from outside that there are discussions taking place, maybe not so visibly uh, in Japan uh, in the longer term, but you folks believe that's that's not the case? I mean, you don't think that there's actually going to be a serious discussion about immigration and you know, the point system and, you know, what what is the good good uh, system oh. like the Singapore or Canada or whatever? No, okay, they you... will have to have that here. They'll have the discussion, but it'll be, mm-hmm. in a, I think, in a, totally on an academic level and that uh, politicians will talk about it. S- certainly the mavericks within the LDP will talk about it. Someone like Kon- Konotaro mm-hmm. will talk mm-hmm. about it significantly mm-hmm. and say, yeah. look, we, this is these are things we have to do. Uh, certain people in the DP who are not allied with the labor unions mm-hmm. uh, like uh, Nagashima, uh, mm-hmm. Akisa. Uh, yeah, Akisa, he would, he'll definitely be on board regarding mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. in both of the main parties, there are extreme protectionist and e- extreme conservative elements. In the right. DP, it's the fact that its core is mm. is Rengel and right. the labor unions, yeah. which are not interested in immigration in any right. way. Right. Uh, and then there are all kinds of small businesses mm. which depend on this program, right. which are through the I see the Japanese Chamber of Commerce mm. have their push right. on everything that's you know, going on. Yeah, there. I can see that. But you know, also increasingly, I've been uh, seeing on television and also reading in the, in the magazines about how the Japanese government puts money into things like uh, caring for the elderly and especially people with dementia and mm-hmm. Alzheimer's and so forth. But increasingly, they're building these facilities, the hard facilities, but they, they're they not opening up because there aren't enough people to take care of the right. aging, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I, 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 I have to believe that at least with regard to the... Uh, the caregivers for the age, aged population that they're going to have to do something pretty pretty quickly. Right. right. I mean, otherwise, they're, they're, we're going to have all these new buildings, right. no, no people being able to take advantage of them because they, there aren't any people who are going to be willing to work the long hours and get the low pay in order to take care of right. these people. And in that particular industry, that's not a job for interns, right? That's that's a oh. job for perhaps uh, up-and-coming uh, young unskilled laborers, but uh, there's a, a real phobia here, especially in the medical industry, for mm-hmm. foreign workers. I mean, the the Filipina nurses are coming in. Um, they a, a couple hundred, at yeah, most. a couple hundred, not very many, but right. you know, they're 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 trying that. It is a it's an experiment. They need more. There's plenty of Filipina nurses. Uh, I disagree with that one because I, 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 when you look <laughs> at the numbers, the, the Philippines exports nurses to the entire world, mm-hmm. and. As compared to the the number that they've trained and the number who are actually working in the Philippines, it's it's really strip mining the Philippines. It's and I think the same is true with Indonesia. If you're taking trained medical personnel from those countries, you're it, it, for me it's criminal. It's simply just robbing those countries of of their their medical system in order to bolster yours. Yeah, we call that globalization. Yeah, I know we call it globalization. <laughs> but in this case, it it, 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 it it health is something that should be different. That's mm-hmm. why we have national health programs mm-hmm. uh, because it's something different. And yet we still seem to think that international nursing labor is something that should be globalized. Right. I disagree with that. But beyond this, the the, the whole issue of who's going to be serving. Uh, these, the government can't be honest about it. It, mm-hmm. it has not published, for example, any new figures regarding the number of people leaving their 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 business or their their job in order to take care of an, mm-hmm. an elderly yeah. relative. That's a huge since problem. 2012, That's a huge problem. since 2012, since the time that the DPJ was in power, mm-hmm. all during the Abe administration, they have not put down a single number. Mm-hmm. How many people left last year? Mm-hmm. Zero. And because not of, only that, because there is a gender aspect to this. Oh, because, of course it is. Uh, you know, you sure. see women Absolutely. leaving the yeah. workplace because yep. they, in overwhelming numbers, have to care for their. Mm-hmm. Aging right. parents right. and well, that's that's been the tradition since the 1970s. The the in fact, it was branded in the 1970s as the Japanese way of doing social welfare, which was the men will be workers in the corporate world. The corporations will top off their health care and their pension plans so as to leave the women open to be mm-hmm. full-time mothers and full-time elder care. Right. Right. That was the Japanese way. Well, the Japanese way broke down in the 1990s. Mm. Men started losing their jobs through ristora and all these different things so that they they couldn't yeah. they couldn't do this yeah, yeah, they couldn't do this transition and women are now working. So the Japanese way that they had which is the way the pension and health systems and tax systems are set up 
has to go through a complete overhaul, and that's way too much for even Mr. Abe and his incredibly powerful government. Hey, right? maybe Japan, maybe the Diet ought to figure out a way to have a quota to have at least half women in the, in the Diet, right? I mean, oh, that's, to get the discussion proposing. going, you mean? <laughs> yeah, to keep the, at least to broaden the conversation here and get testimony from what sure. women are, are doing. Well, they're considering that right now. They want, I mean, the rankings of Japanese female Participation, participation in the political in the world. political world, it's just it's so uh, 162 out of 190 countries. Yeah, and but the th and, and the, in this diet session, there is in fact a a multi a, 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 a transpartisan bill. LDP women lawmakers, DP women lawmakers, even communists, all putting together a bill asking the parties to okay, it's voluntarily without any punishment, at least go for equality in the numbers of women candidates that they offer so that we can get these discussions mm -hmm. going. Right. right. Should they all wear white in the uh, in the diet sessions, Glenn? Yeah, that's a good idea. No oh, pink. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you may have noticed that that white is indeed mm. Renho's outfit oh, and, 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 and she wears it nothing but white all the time. So maybe uh -huh. she's up on already up on things in that regard. Yeah, Hillary Clinton was wearing a lot of white too. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, in, the, um, in, in Trump's uh, speech to the Congress, mm. they had yeah, a, a huge right. group of, of uh, female lawmakers. Democratic, mainly white. Democratic. Yes. Was that the white flag of surrender? <laughs> no. Uh, no, I don't okay. think so. Purity. <laughs> <laughs> well, Japan is truly between a rock and a hard place when it comes to immigration. Will they challenge this issue? Will more foreign workers be allowed in? We're going to continue to watch this. Please stay tuned.